The King of Curses is free for the first time in a thousand years, and Megami was stolen with Yuji left on the verge of tears. The merger is about to begin. A fish has taken to the skies. Things at Jujutsu Kaisen are looking truly desperate, and as a wise man once said, life has many doors, and one of those doors is the back of the prison realm. And it leads to the only hope they have left, Gojo Satoru, the strongest sorcerer alive and the only one capable of standing against Ryomen Sukuna. It's hardly a shock that 15 Finger Sukuna is bodying the verse. And most of our remaining protagonists have regrouped for the first time since the beginning of the Culling Games. And without the help of Gojo Satoru, according to my calculations, they're approximately dead as fuck. Ever since the grand no-diffing of Ryu, the power balance of Jujutsu Kaisen has been made all too apparent, and while Yuji is most certainly cooking, he's gonna be stuck in the oven for at least 20 more chapters. Gojo coming back is needed now more than ever. Is he enough to stop Sukuna? The truth is, we don't know. But we know that he's the only one that might have a shot. Gojo has been out of the story for years, but I'm sorry, have we forgotten? This is the honored one. This is the beating ass delivery system of Jujutsu Kaisen. So don't sleep on Gojo Satoru. While the final conflict of Tsukuda may not rest on his shoulders, one of the greatest battles in this series absolutely does. For years, I was worried that the return of Gojo Satru would overshadow the character arcs of our main cast. But due to some expert writing, Gojo's return will only increase the stakes. The stage is truly being set for people to get jumped. When Gojo gets out of that box, he's gonna have to deal with the revelations that many of those closest to him have already been killed and that his surrogate son has been stolen by Ryomen Tsukuda? Safe to say, he's gonna be pissed. Ever since Gojo got locked up in Shibuya, things have been going wild. We have ancient sorcerers running around in stolen bodies, and I'm 50-50 on these guys only existing to job. I find that to be a worthy profession, especially if they're doing it for Gojo and Tsukuna. Gojo's return is going to flip the whole world on its head, but in a completely different way than last time. Gojo is likely the only character in this entire series capable of pushing a Ten Shadow Sukuna. And where I personally think this is going to go is that Gojo will be the one to help get Megami back from Sukuna. And I have a few reasons for believing this. First of all, I doubt that Gojo is willing to kill Megami to stop Sukuna. Gojo was not willing to kill innocent bystanders in his fight in Shibuya. And that's partially what got him sealed in the first place. And another reason for this is that the final conflict with Sukuna really lies with Yuji and Megami to an extent. These two characters have the most beef and the most interaction with Sukuna. They were the first three major characters introduced in the series. While yes, Gojo has been externally hurt by Sukuna, the only direct interaction they had was a 10 second scrap and a 10 second conversation. And considering that Gojo is a supporting character and Gege doesn't particularly like him, the chance of him being used to close out the story seems unlikely. There has obviously been something cooking in Yuji's backstory. He doesn't look like Sukuna for no reason. He's not the son of a thousand year old sorcerer for no reason. There is going to be payoff for that, and Yuji fans should delight, because you're going to get your moment eventually. However, Gojo is not going to be written to just be the honored jobber. He has a dramatic role to play in the story. And while I do believe he will ultimately be defeated in this confrontation with Sukuna, I expect it to be a high diff, and only after he's played a role in the story that only he was capable of accomplishing. I don't expect Gojo to come back and get bodied, and I don't expect him to come back and clean the house for everybody. Gojo dying instantly makes his release pointless, and Gojo coming back and wiping the verse just turns the whole story into a story about a guy who was in a box until he wasn't. And that is why the current state of Jujutsu Kaisen is so excellent. Because Gojo can't just solve the problem by immediately killing Sukuna. Personally, I think Gojo executing a family line with hollow purples is pretty dark. And this is really the perfect opportunity for Gojo to have a role that isn't just overwhelming, which is always the problem with his character in the first place. Gojo dying to a Ten Shadows Megami but getting Sukuna out of him seems pretty interesting to me, though I don't think it'll happen exactly like that. I just pray to God that Sukuna's defeat is not because Megami's soul fights back from within him. First of all, nobody wants to see two nerf characters fight each other. We already saw this happen once in Chapter 215. And it was a little sus then. Does anybody really want Ryomen Sukuna to be defeated by the power of friendship with extra steps? Now the fact that we cut away from our main cast to focus on Sukuna's exploits in the manga, this has me thinking that we're going to have them release Gojo once we cut back to them. We have Choso crying on a couch, he has the back of the prison realm, we have Angel, and while yes she lost an arm and got tossed off a building, in Jujutsu Kaisen that's like losing an eye in Naruto. Unfortunate but expected. The emotional hit of Gojo having to see his prized student be a vessel for Sukuna. This is the best way that I think Gojo's fight with Sukuna could have gone. Because before now, there was really no emotional conflict tied to it at all. And while there's still more emotional conflict between Yuji and Sukuna, this makes the stakes of his fight a lot higher than they were before. 
We're gonna see a serious Gojo for multiple reasons, and him being the only one capable of buying the rest of our protagonist's time is a really cool way to have his character used. Gojo's presence in the story gave the characters an overwhelming sense of safety, as well as the reader, and while he was not omnipresent, if things got too bad, he could show up and stop it before it got out of hand. Except things are already out of hand. You have two major issues to deal with. Sukuna is running around with Megami's body and the merger is about to occur. And I think the merger will happen partially. There's been so much build up to it and we don't even know the full purpose of it. But like most anime villain plans, it'll probably work for like 10 chapters and then they're going to stop it. Now, given the level of jumpings in this series, I expect the series to end in at least a partial great jumping. Sukuna is no stranger to being jumped. He's been jumped in the past, he's been jumped in the present, and he must be jumped again. And he will be taken to the village hidden in these hands. But right now, Gojo is it. He's the only one that can stay in the ring with this guy. And I have a suspicion that he'll be the only one ever capable of handling a 10 Shadows Sukuna. Gojo having to face the most overpowered version of this character, and him being the only one that was capable of getting him out of Megami, and by proxy nerfing Sukuna because he'll no longer have 10 Shadows, and doing so, he'll also be giving Megami his agency back. And this would call back to the original time he and Megami met, where Gojo prevented Megami from being sold in the first place. Personally, I think that'd be a great end to Gojo's character. It wouldn't take away from the climax of Yuji and Megami's arc, and he gets an epic fight, and it prevents him from just being a jobber, and it makes him utterly crucial to the resolution of the story. Do I think it's going to happen exactly like that? Not necessarily. I feel like Yuji would be involved in getting Megami back somehow, but I certainly feel there will be more layers to this conflict than Gojo simply coming out and beating Sukuna. Because Yuji and Megami are cooking, but some guy is trying to knife the gas line and Gojo's the only one who can stop him. Yep, that's my official Jujutsu Kaisen opinion. Gojo's the only one who can save the gas line. For our characters to cook, he must fight. But now I want to hear what you guys think, because after all, it's just my opinion. So comment below and let me know. If you like videos like this, subscribe for more, and as always, thanks for watching.